What's going on, Internet? Happy Spooktober. We don't see you for two years, and then all of a sudden, we get invited to this lavish dinner. Don't tell me that this is normal. Just watched a movie last night. I'm going to review it for you now. It's called The Invitation, and it's directed by Karen Kusama, and it stars Lou Marshall Green, Tammy Blanchard, and Michelle... M M Mikel Hoisman, Heisman, I don't know how to pronounce it. The, the Dario 2 on Game of Thrones. And it tells the story of a group of friends who get together for a dinner party. And one of them starts realizing that something isn't quite right, but he doesn't know what. That's all I really want to tell you, because anything more I think would be delving into spoiler territory. And I really don't want to do that. I want you, you should just watch this movie completely blind and experience it the way I did. Which is not knowing anything about it. Because holy hell, guys, this movie is really good. Really fucking good. Great acting. Lou, Lou Marshall Green does a really, really excellent job at portraying this character who's just not really sure what's going on, but he's very paranoid and he's very... a little on edge, and which is pretty much the position the audience is in throughout the entire movie, because... I'm gonna start by saying this movie is a very slow burn, but... It never is uninteresting because the entire time you know something isn't quite right. You're experiencing it with him, but you don't know what it is and you don't know who to trust and who not to trust. And I think that's really, really, really interesting. I mean, you're pretty much in the same situation that the the main character is in where you just don't know what's what exactly is going on. You're not comfortable, though. The entire movie is just very uneasy and very uncomfortable, but you're not really sure why. You just know these people are, you know, acting and interacting with each other very, very weird. It's a really, really solid mystery. I think it's executed very well. Again, like I said, you're not really sure quite what's happening the whole time and who to trust. Um, but this, it, it really does a great job at, you know, building the sense of, you know, uneasiness and paranoia. And it really, uh, it, because of that, it keeps you invested. It keeps you kind of on the edge of your seat and you're just really not comfortable and you don't know why, but you know something, you know shit's about to hit the fan. You just don't know when. And boy, does shit hit the fan. And the, the last 15, 20 minutes of this movie are fucking nuts. So cool. Loved it. It's also added to by a very, um, really, really interesting editing style, which I love because it's very disorienting and it kind of keeps you on edge, just like, again, like with the main character. And the sound design in this movie actually really impressed me because it's a very quiet movie, but it does a really good job at kind of immersing you into this world because it's just a dinner party. It is fairly quiet. You're All, all you're getting is just, you know, this weird droning score that continues throughout the thing, but it's really, really cool. Loved that. Loved the, you know, loved the editing style. Loved the way the story is just, the story unfolds in that you, you're left with, you, you start with a lot of blanks and the blanks are filled in as it goes along, which I, I love. I think that's great that they didn't go with some expository bullshit. A couple little negatives, but nothing really glaring for me. I think that maybe there were one or two characters who I felt were ultimately unnecessary to the narrative. And the ending didn't bother me, but I can see how some people would be bothered by it in the same way they were bothered by the ending of, like, 10 Cloverfield Lane, because it might feel unearned to some people in that there's no real... Um, there's no real build-up to the and by the ending I mean the last like two minutes of the movie, last minute or two. The the third act is still tense as fucking excellent, but the, the the final two minutes or so might feel a little unearned and a little sudden to some people. And I it didn't bother me at all. I thought it actually kind of worked well with the narrative, but I can see how it would be a problem to some. But overall, I think it's just an overwhelmingly positive movie. The acting is phenomenal. The direction is really 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 solid especially coming from somebody who directed Jennifer's body the writing is just really excellent too like you they all act like normal people or normal adjacent people <laughs> but um yeah the acting's great the directing's great the script was very solid love the editing style love the you know the way this movie the cinematography was great sound design excellent has a couple little flaws that mostly come in toward the end but overall i think it's a really 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 good film. I'm gonna say it's definitely a must-see. Check it out. It's on Netflix. It's an hour and 40 minutes. Not much time. 
yeah, good. it's a good way to start, you know, the month of October, especially considering how busy this month is going to be, and we've got some good and some probably bad. Yeah, but stay tuned, guys. You know, we've got reviews upcoming of uh, The Greasy Strangler and um, Under the Shadow and, and Fender Bender. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And, you know, if you like me or Mike and Mo, they're not here right now, but, I mean, if you like them, Click down there and subscribe and like and comment and tell us what you thought of all the movies we're talking about. Tell us what you thought of the invitation. We want to hear your thoughts. We like you. I hope you like us. Thanks so much, guys.